Hello Isopod fans, this is Wally from Supreme Isopods. Don't listen to those other videos saying that Porcelio Expansus or Magnificus or Rubber Duckies or whatever are the king of the isopods. I'm going to show you the king today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And stick around till the end because I have two or three tips that will really help you breed these animals. The Isopod Vlog so what makes the king of isopods? What makes an isopod number one in all of the isopods? Is it how beautiful they are? Is it how expensive they are? Is it how difficult they are to breed? Is it how difficult they are to obtain? Well, this one has none of those because it's fairly easy to, to obtain. It's fairly inexpensive. It doesn't have the most beauty in the world, but it has one thing going for it, and that's size. This is the big one. This is the titan of the isopod world. And I'm going to show you this colony and a couple of other colonies that I have. And you're going to see why this is the king of isopods. I picked up my first colony of Porcelio Hoffman Sagai about 18 months ago from Ryan McVeigh. I was lucky enough to get about 8 or 10 animals. And within a month and a half, I had babies. I have mankai all over the place. I think that first brood was about 60 animals. I isolated, I isolated the babies, put them aside into another container. They grew up and they're right here. The, the adults kept breeding and now the babies are breeding and I've pulled some of the animals out of the baby container, baby container, and they're breeding. There's a couple of things that really make an isopod stand out for me personally, and that's if they're active, if they're out and about all the time, and Hoffman Segai are certainly that. If they're beautiful, and Hoffman Segai are fairly beautiful in their own gray way, or if they're really super big, and that's what Porcelio Hoffman Segai are. Let's take a look. Let's go ahead and take a look at this culture. Now, there's going to be a lot of animals in here, and you're going to see that some of them are gray, and some of them are a real light gray. There's several different morphs of Hoffman Segai. The most common is the obviously the dark gray. There's a lighter gray. There's also a chocolate. I'm not a huge fan of the chocolate. And now there's a light orange and another that's piebald. Just crazy morphs coming out of this Hoffman Segai. You can see how absolutely huge these animals are. Let me go ahead and grab one here and you can get a feel for how big they are. Now this is by far not the biggest Hoffman Segai, but you can see it's nearly half my palm. We'll see a big one in just a minute. This is considered one of the large Spanish isopods and they love their enclosure dry with some area of moist. And you can see that I'm using sphagnum moss to provide the moist area. I have some springtails in here. I have the dried leaves, the dead decaying wood, and I feed all kinds of different foods, anywhere from zucchini and potatoes and carrots and pumpkins for their vegetables to the supreme isopod chow and even flake foods. You can see on the end there that real light chocolatey one. I'll probably go ahead and pull that one out, those two out that I see there and isolate those out. As far as temperatures, these Porcelio Hoffman Segai like it around 68 to 74 degrees. I like to put a clump of calcium in here. I provide calcium both in calcium carbonate and in eggshells. Again, there's plenty of leaves and the decaying wood that I have here you can see that it just flakes off perfect wood. Let's go ahead and take a look at another uh, culture. Here we're going to see the original colony. And again, I've had this culture for about 18 months or so. It's in a 27 quart. The previous culture was in a 15. I mentioned how dry they look like it, but this culture has a lot of air holes. They love, love ventilation. 
I have the four air holes on the top and three on the side for cross ventilation. You can see I have this tub set up basically the same with the sphagnum moss. I've got probably 30% of the enclosure um, moist and the rest is dry. Lots and lots and lots of hiding places. Here's one of their favorite places. And you can see there's tons of babies running around in there too. Here's a piece of cork bark they love. And as we can see, right here, some of these older Hoffman Sega, I'll see if I can get this one on my hand before he runs away. As you can see, these guys are absolute monsters. Take a look at that as it runs off. Now, another thing I wanted to mention was that you can tell the sex of these animals. This is a male. See if we can hold it a little bit closer. Now this is a female. You can see the extensions are much shorter than that male's. Here's just an absolute beautiful black, dark Hoffman Sege. I don't think that I mentioned before but this occurs in this black form as well. Here's another place that they really like to hide. We'll see if we have a few under here. As you can tell, I love these Hoffman Segei. At the top, I'll see if I can point, you can see a brown one. Again, I think that I'll probably take this weekend and start isolating those browns. They're not my favorite. You can see some mankai running around here as well. There's a couple more. Here's another one, here's a group. Let's go ahead and take a look at another enclosure. I have three more enclosures and I'm gonna tell you why I have these other enclosures in just a second. And this is a huge, huge key with this animal. Here's one of the other enclosures. Again, I have three of these. These are six quarts. That's right, Hoffman Segei, the biggest isopod in a little six quart enclosure. I started off my original group in these enclosures, and again, they bred just so quickly. About four months ago, I isolated a half a dozen individual adult animals into these small six quart enclosures. And the reason I did that is because I feel, and I think that the community feels, that these are very, very territorial animals. Although we see this group here, and I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so we can see it closer. And even though we see this pile of Hoffman Segei here, they are a very territorial animal, especially the moms with babies. And I'm going to come back to that point in just a second. I don't know if you can see, but we have little mankai running around here. Here's one, and we see a few in this little gap here. They like to find those little crevices. Let's turn this over and see what else we can find. And I don't know if you can see that, but there is a bunch of mankai. And that's probably from two females. I think that they do very, very well in these small enclosures where they can be close to their broods and you probably won't see it, but at the edge of that leaf there, in the dark, is probably a mom that's guarding her brood. Let's see if we can pull this up a little bit. And there's mom. I know this is a terrible, terrible picture, but she's looking around. She has her arthropods up, indicating that she's a little disturbed. I say that they're territorial. And that means that males will not specifically guard a territory, but they will defend a territory, push each other around. If they find a place that they feel comfortable with that's isolated, they'll stick to that territory. Now again, these are a little bit older animals I believe they're probably around almost two years now. And they're just absolutely 
super huge. They are the Titans. Look at those antenna going. And one final point that I'll make about these animals is that a lot of people will lose a female after they give birth, and that's very unfortunate. Some keepers feel that that's because of the birth itself, but again, I feel that it might be a territorial thing. Mom trying to protect her brood and getting into a little scuffle. And again, you can see mom here. This is a female Hoffman Segei watching her brood. And another female down here. And there's the other female watching her brood. Let's go ahead and put these away. The other two tubs that I have are exactly like this with the same amount of adults with broods in each one of them. Porcelio Hoffman Segei. If it's on the Aquarimax Pets t-shirt dead center, it has to be the king of isopods. Thank you for joining us today, isopod fans. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational. Remember, this is a very territorial animal. The, if you can keep it in a smaller enclosure like this, I think you'll have more success. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit that notification all so you don't miss another one of these videos. And thank you very much for watching.